Greatness. Greatness. Bow, bow, bow. Greatness. There are two times to be great when you feel like it and when you don't. Welcome to the Renewing the Mind podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Sanchez. Joined with me is my dad, Dr. Raul Sanchez. How you doing, Dad? I'm feeling amazing. Like back in the day at NDSU, we had a saying, those who stay will play, those who play will be champions. Once a champion, always a champion. Let's go. And there's the ring kiss. On this podcast, we teach you how to flip your mindset by talking through how you renew your perspective, move towards uncertainty, and find what's awesome about that in every situation. If you missed last week's episode, you can head over to any platform that you consume podcasts on and check it that out, or you can head over to YouTube, watch the video version. Last week was a, a little heavier of a podcast, talked about privilege, and uh, three things we asked and then answered was, what is it, and why me, and are you immune? And uh, you want to hit on it just a little bit? The most important piece is to understand your personal self-awareness so that you can climb out of where you dropped, and then you can turn back and mentor one person. Yeah. It was a good good episode. I had a ton of positive feedback, ton of people th- thanking us for uh, kind of sharing our heart and not really holding any, any punches back. So if you missed that one, it's a great one. Uh, it's Kirk a great reminder also it. that like, you know, things that happen to you don't have to remain who you are. It's like it happened to me, but it's not who I am. Right. And so those lessons are what build me to who I am today. And so many people try to bury those past. They try to hide from it or they use it as an excuse to stay buried. The point is you have to have self-awareness to expose where you're at and then you climb out of it, maybe with a mentor, so that you can turn back and help somebody. Sweet. Before we jump into today's content, we got a segment we like to call a WHAT moment. WHAT, WHAT, WHAT. WHAT is an acronym that stands for what's awesome about that in every situation, whether good or bad, you ask the question, what's awesome about that, pull out the positive that keeps you going through the good and through the bad. You got a WHAT moment? Yeah, my what moment is um, I gained another daughter. What up, Melody? Woo-woo, Welcome woo-woo, to the fam. Woo woo. What what? So we went to uh, Ames, and uh, there was like twenty plus people hiding by a clock tower, trying to get all this stuff set up because Terrence had an, a surprise engagement, and you know you're coordinating the camera with Tavian and the video. All trying, these, to. All, trying to, you know, we're trying to keep kids quiet. You could hear Stella for two blocks. I called Alicia, I think twice, and <laughs> she answered the phone. I know, I'm trying. Yeah, I know it's hard. We're all hiding behind 25 this. 25 minutes in this bush. Yes. Let's, let's and Terrence, to... Terrence did well because he tarried pretty long because he had a couple of straggler buddies that are showing up and were like, bro, what are you doing? Terrence can walk up anytime. And he's like, I texted him. I'm good. And we're all laughing. We're like, oh, great. This ain't going to go. So there's, there's so many moving pieces, so many things that kind of went out of the plan. But thankfully, the Watt moment is none of them actually wrecked the plan. And actually, in the end, it worked out perfectly. You and Tave got the video on the tree. You caught Mel's moment where she says, yes. You know, it's just that we all were there to hug her. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing that you can coordinate all those people and it actually came through. Yeah. So the Watt moment is like, even though your plan's like falling apart, you know, off paper, you're, you know, things just aren't going quite how you like it. There's so much stress that can happen but you just keep plugging, you keep moving, you keep climbing. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, boom, I got a daughter. I think it was cool. Cause you know, Terrence had this plan in mind. And then as we got there, we kind of switched the plan and then changed the plan. And then as his friends got there later, cause we went up there beforehand. Correct. And his friend, then we were explaining all the situation. Then I was like, well, Tave, we can, we don't have to hide with the rest of them. We can hide over here. Yes. And so we were sitting through some kind of some shrubbery and trees and I, I could have swore they saw us, but they were looking right at us and we're you know, just standing behind this tree and, Obviously, I'm a bigger dude, so like the tree didn't <laughs> cover the whole body. And so, Do you have your camo shirt on? Maybe yeah, that helped you no, blend. I yeah. did wear black, though, on purpose to try to hide. But camo, yeah, bro, then, camo. You know, I'm like creeping out to the side. And then Tay fi- figured out that he can uh, start recording on his phone via his Apple Watch. Yeah. So then we hooked up the phone on the tree. And, uh, was, and then I was, was supposed dope. to send the text when he got on a knee um, for you guys to come out. And I'm trying to take pictures and send this text. So I typed go. Yes. And then I, I, I thought I sent it. And so I'm taking these pictures and you guys aren't coming. So then finally you guys get waved on. Um, and then I'm like, Dad, I sent the text. Where are you guys at? And I pull my yeah. phone up. Because my, my and, job and was to hold everybody it, back. It still says go. And I'm like, oh, dude, I forgot. Yeah, I was holding it. everybody back. And Alicia looks at me and she's like, 
he's on his knee. He's on his knee. And I was like, go, go, go. <laughs> and we all kind of like run yeah. out of this clock tower. I'll put the picture up on the YouTube uh, uh, video of this podcast. Uh, so in the in the moment that I grabbed uh, the picture of Melody, like in that shock moment, yeah. you can see her dad and my mom, yes. Stacy and John, and John, in like peering through the uh, you gotta post it. That's like a, creepers looking through the bush. That is awesome. like they couldn't they couldn't <laughs> wait for everyone to come out. They had to make their own moment and yeah. not miss it. But yeah, that was perfect. Sweet. Was, was well, awesome. if you got a Watt moment, hit us up in the comments. Let us know your Watt moment. We love to have uh, you know you guys uh, explain your Watt moments or what you guys have been through, and then just open the conversation for that. But to, today we're talking about resilient parenting. So we did resilient kids, and then took uh, a week off for talk about privilege, just because of the current situation of our uh, society and culture. And then now we're jumping to resilient parenting. And today we're asking the number one problem I think all parents ask, how to get my kids to listen. And then we're going to take this. Uh, you got a good book for that or something? Uh, like? No, that's why I'm here. I'm trying to learn. Uh, this is probably <laughs> going to be a, what, a two or three part uh, series on resilient parenting. And we're just going to each week ask a question that parents um, are asking and a struggle that we have. And then we're going to try to yep. answer that as best as we can. So today, how to get your kids to listen. We're going to talk about how to get them to listen yes. and then how to get them to immediately respond. And, uh, man, this is something really that I'm going through right now with a four year old, yeah. you know, an almost two year old. This is, uh, at the core, I think of all, all parenting at all ages, this is probably the number Super one. Super challenging. So yeah, hit us up. So, uh, the first thing is just, you know, we're going to talk about this answer this number one question, which is, you know, how do I get my kid to listen? So rather than just teaching, you know, points that I think are the most important piece about parenting, uh, we're going to start changing it by asking a question, the predominant question, and then do a deep dive on that one thing. So today we're only talking about listening and we're just going to talk about multiple, multiple angles of that. So the craziest thing to me is this, anytime you talk to like a person who doesn't have kids, perhaps not dating, dating, married, he or she will always see a, a couple with kids who are struggling to get that kid to listen. And they always say this, my kid is going to know the word no. Yeah. You're right? My kid will listen. My kid or will I listen. I had a kid. Yes. They would never do that. Correct. Yeah. And then when they drop a kid, they're like, what's wrong with my kid? I think my kid's crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, they have a brain and they can't manage their brain. They can't control their brain. And they're just this random firing little dude that just runs and jumps and just, just goes on a whim. Okay. So, all right, listening. So how do we get our kids to listen? First of all, let's just define the word listen. So listen is the ability to, is the ability to hear and then do, right? So I can hear something, but do nothing. That's not listening. I heard you. Listening is I heard you, and now I'm going to do what you've asked, or I'm going to comply with the statement, okay? That's listening. So the first piece you have to understand about kids is kids don't understand the language. You can use words, and they don't really understand the word. They understand the context, the inflection, and especially the intonation. Okay, mom, mom always brings this up because, mom, Stacy, when we were in Fargo, we used to go out to eat on, after church on Sundays. And, uh, you know, didn't have a lot of money, so we couldn't go to sit down at a steak place. we just run real quick, you know, sit down at a, a fast food place. And so she didn't really like Taco Bell. I did, you know. So we would ask you, and she would ask you, like, Tyler, do you want to go to Taco Bell, or would you rather go to Wendy's? And then I would pull the mirror down, make eye contact with you. I'm like, Ty Ty. And you'd be like, yeah. And I'd be like, do you want to go to Wendy's? Or do you want to run for the? And then you'd go, border <laughs> and Stacy would get so mad and I'm almost already driving there anyway and she's like you cheat that's cheating you manipulate him 100%. I'm like I didn't I didn't do anything like you do that with Stella right yeah here's the thing like I can look at Sadie our dog and I'd be like you're the dumbest cutest little fart breath little dog and she's like all excited whatever she she's the same like I know I'm not comparing your kid to a dog yeah but they don't understand but, language same but way. it's just the concept of when they're young they don't understand the language yep. They learn our behavior, they learn our context, they learn our, our intonation, inflection, okay? All those pieces. So when we talk about listening, you know what most parents do? Most parents will say this, like, honey, this is really super important that you put away your Xbox because we're going to be late for my meeting. What do you think a kid's going to do? I don't care about your meeting. Uh, just like, oh, she's not, even, she's not even concerned yet, right? And then all of a sudden you'd be like, I already told you. And then all of a sudden the kid jumps up and listens. Yep. 
SDK. Do you see what I'm saying? All right, so now focus on this. If kids don't listen to words, and they don't really listen because of what you're saying, what do they listen to? Behavior. We call that modeling. So this is like a monkey see, monkey do thing. So here's what I want you to think about. What do you model at home that your kid picks up that you don't know he or she picks up? Okay? So back at NDSU, uh, Stacy was in this program, Child Development, and it's super cool. It was state of the art. So now a lot of therapy offices have a two-way mirror, one-way mirror stuff. So people are in the back taking notes on how the kids, how the kids are interacting, and that's how they train. So back at, on campus at the university, that's what happened. So we get called in to, I think you were three or four, and you were in their pre-K program, their daycare program, and we, you got called in. We got called in for bully behavior. And so we sit there with this doctor of the program. Um, at the time, I was... It was pretty early on. You're probably three because I was still in athletic training and I didn't know what she was saying, but she was using some big words about, you know, your behavior and your modeling and stuff. But um, basically the issue was you would come up to kids and you would forearm shiver them and bump them in the shoulder. You just walk up to Joe and be like, what's up, Joe? And just hit him in the shoulder. And then so the comment to us was Tyler has bully behavior and he is attacking kids. And so I said, well, disp- you know, define attacking. And she, she shared that. And I was like, that's how he says hi. <laughs> I'm sure she's looking at this young teenager, you know, like 19 or 20. He's got this two or three year old who's yeah. going, what? Right. That's how he says hi. Dude, speak English. Like a caveman. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. Like all my buddies are football players and they come in and we forearm shiver each other. You know, the other thing you used to say to kids, what up, scrub? Why? Because all my, like, Sam Gagliardi and, you know, and, like, Dave, Marion, you know, Steve Marion, these guys, these dudes would come over and they'd just, just mess with you. Like, what up, scrub? And you'd be like, what up, scrub? You know? So then she was like, he's learning slang behavior. He's learning slang yeah. language, like, all these things. And I'm looking at her, I'm like, so I don't get your point. Like, I didn't understand what she's trying to tell me. Like, he's a bully because he's been learning bully behavior in modeling. Yep. I didn't understand it. But then as I started explaining it to her, like, look, I, I play college football here, and my buddy is this is how we act. And she was like, fine, but you're in your 20s. Little kids can't do this. Right. A three-year-old you know? forearm shivering another three-year-old is not really <laughs> accepted. In yeah. So in my head, you're not a bully. A bully would, like, punch you in the face and steal your truck, you know? That's not – this isn't bully behavior. But after it sunk in, Stacy's poking me, you know? You know, mom kicks me under the table when I'm doing – yeah, so Stacy's poking me, and I'm trying not to argue with people. I'm trying to understand – and then I go home and I'm like, wow, so my kid's going to get kicked out of school because of who I am? Yep. Like, it was hard to kind of understand. But we started just when buddies come over, I would just start to shake their hand and hug them. And then so actually, that's me and you came up with a handshake. Yep. So we started working on the handshake just to get you to get off forearm so punching down people. down a terrible path of just <laughs> bullying from the side. <laughs> Choke holding people, calling them scrub. Yeah. What kind of thug are you, bro? It's your fault. Yeah. I'm going to write a book, Raised by Wolves. Or raised by teenagers. Raised by a gorilla. That might <laughs> that might be more. <laughs> raised by... I raised myself. No. Uh, no, we saw this just recently. So um, Stella, you know, watches some YouTube and some Netflix, and it's all pretty monitored. But every once in a while, she'll start watching something, and then, you know, for the first time. And so she get in the van, and we pick her up, and we're just driving home. And at night, we're, you know, talking about what the day went. And she said, yeah, we're watching this new show. I think it's called Zed the Zombie. So I'm like, well, you know, just zombies right off the bat. Just I don't really want her to watch zombies. And she doesn't understand the concept of yeah. yet that a movie is not necessarily reality. We're just starting to walk through that line. Yeah. You know, spirit, the horse real. Or can I go see him or is it a cartoon? And so she was like, so I said, well, tell me about Zed the zombie. And she's like, well, it's, you know, they turn into zombies and other people turn into um, wolves. And it's super fun and cool. And he's a good guy, dad, because uh, he eats brains. And I was like, uh. whoa. That was for a couple of red, you know, what do you yeah. mean he eats brains? And so, no, it's good brains and it helps him live better and longer. And she's going through all this stuff. And so I'm like, no, that's, that's probably not it. So we call Holly who watches Stella and she, you know, was kind of running through the same thing with Allie. And so she, that night she went to go talk to Allie and Allie was on the trampoline, which Allie is, I think, uh, five or six maybe. And so she was on the trampoline howling like a werewolf. And so Holly went up to Allie and was like, what are you doing? And she's like, well, in Zed the zombie, they howl at night to each other, you know, the werewolves. And so she said, well, I'm howling. Um, but I think Stella, 
uh, me and Stella talked and we were supposed to go home and both at night after dinner and go outside and howl at each other. And she said, but I think Stella forgot because I can't hear her. That's hilarious. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we talked to Stella about, you know, this is not okay. You know, zombies just, and it's nothing terrible. It's nothing bad. But as a yeah. four year old, kind of like you said, it's fine to watch knowing that it's, it's not real and that right. someone's really not eating brains. But to Stella at four, that dude was actually eating brains, like Correct. real brains. Like she didn't know it was just a movie and fiction. I mean, so, yeah. um, and, and she started modeling some of that and she started acting and growling like a werewolf and, you know, saying I got hair on my arm, just, just different stuff that, you know, we're starting to realize that she's picking up by watching mm-hmm. not only what we do, but also on TV. Um, you know, we went on a road trip to Ames to, for Terrence's thing. And I didn't think she was listening cause we had a movie playing. Me and Alicia were just talking about the dynamic difference between Eliza and Stella. Mm-hmm. And Stella is like a people person, just wants to talk to everyone. We were at uh, the outlets, and she was just asking random people at the Nike store, what's your name? My name's Stella. This is my baby sister, Eliza. You know, And then mm-hmm. Eliza's not really like that yet, but Eliza has a, like a pranking uh, personality. Like when she gets someone to laugh, she wants to keep making her laugh. Yes. We're just talking about that. And Stella in the background goes, well, I like to make people laugh too. Yeah, and I'm just like, man, as it's just the reality that there's so much that they watch, they listen to. Yes. And, and all of that comes back to what are we doing as parents when we think that we're trying to model and when we're not, they're watching. Yeah. And here's what here's what people don't like to hear, but it's true. Sixty six zero percent of their personality of who a kid is, is formatted in their hard drive by age four. Yeah, when you told us that the other day, that was uh, Bryce was shocked by that. I was, sh- I was like, where were you four years ago? You should have told me that four years ago. I'm already. Yeah, well, still, every, everybody who comes to the clinic, I tell them right away, just so we, so got, we a, got work to do, right? Should I get a session then in the next week? <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, that's the foundation of who so they are. 60% of their foundation is formed by the age of four. Correct. And that's, that's the majority of their personality. That's who, so from four on, the next big brain truncation or when the brain kind of like cuts, you know, when the Bible talks about like pruning, that's exactly what happens in the brain. It's so cool how the brain's, how the brain is designed. But at age 16, if, if a person hasn't used coping mechanism skills in certain areas, there's branches already started. The brain is super efficient. So it'll truncate out all those branches that's wasting blood flow. And it sends the blood to where you're now going. This is why it's so deadly important to keep kids off drugs and alcohol while they're young and and there's a lot of parents who just say stuff like well you know they can experiment not when you're 16 not when you're 14 not no not because your brain is developing these trees and if you start using that consistently you have an arm now that after 16 the brain's not going to truncate it so now you have a strong likelihood of becoming an alcoholic because you started drinking in high school okay so Here's the concept for us modeling wise. If you look all the way back to a kid and if parents ask, okay, how can, how can I get my kid to listen? We walk through the listening pieces. We walk through the modeling pieces. Then here's what I'll, here's what I'll say. Can you identify the behavior you don't want your daughter to have? Yeah. What is it? Okay. She, she, she informs people. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Is there anything in your behavior where you mimic that same behavior? And they'll just, their eyes go up and they go, yeah, I actually do. Where? I golf with dudes and she rides with me in the golf cart. So that's what we do with people. Yep. Okay. Can you change that behavior? What can you do instead? And then they'll be like, I don't know. What, you have some examples. So I was like, okay, handshake, something like that. Right. And then like, okay, so it's going to take some time. Right. So the cool thing about the brain is whatever is learned can be unlearned. It just takes about twice the, twice the length of a learning curve because yep. you're unlearning. Right. So then I say this, like there's two great, great models you can have. One, you're actually the model and you think out loud. It's called a think aloud. So like if I'm actually coming up to you, normally I would just forearm sure of you and be like, what up, scrub? Okay. But this time I'm going to, let's say Stella's in the room. She's maybe on her iPad, but I'm going to exaggerate. I'm going to go up to you and grab your hand. I'm like, what's up, Tyler? Let's do our special handshake. And I'll exaggerate the handshake. And then I love you, Tyler, and give you a quick hug. Well, she's not going to say anything. She's not look, but just like you said, she was listening to the van. She heard it. Now it's gonna, probably going to take, you know, seven, eight, ten times to then now she'll jump up and model it. Okay. And just like, so, so think out loud modeling is I'm acting, I'm doing it in real time. 
And pretty soon I don't have to exaggerate it so much because it's not new. Now it's just what I do. So as soon as you see her start to model it, now you reinforce it. Hey, Stella, you did a great job telling Tyler hi. That was awesome. Yep. So I don't have to say don't do this because she'll do it. I just have to just keep teaching her this is what I'm doing. And slowly through conditioning, she'll do what we want her to do. And the old thing would just fade because she doesn't see it anymore. Yep. Now, your parents get you know, sad about this. Like, oh, man, this is so bad. Like, I shouldn't. No, you don't, don't feel bad. It's the same thing with the privilege. Don't feel bad. You just, you're here. Like we always talk about, like, you don't know what you don't know. But once you know, you cannot unknow, right. right? So now just like when Stella first started watching Spirit and these horses, the shows, she's running around through our house. And I'd be like, Stella, do you want a snack? And she'd be like, I'm a horsey. And she'd just keep running through the kitchen. Still does. <laughs> yeah. It's the same thing. So like, okay, she's a horse. Now she's a zombie, you know. As whatever she watches, she'll drop into her because she's the sponge. Yep. She's just developing her personality. So we don't have to get sad about it. We don't have to get mad about it. We just have to do something. No, I like that because a lot of times when I'm trying to get Stella to listen, I just try to change the way I respond to what she didn't do, right? Like, didn't I tell you? Did you not hear yes. me? Did you... Did you understand? You know, most of the time it's like, yes, right. I know. Like, so one of the things I cannot get her to grasp is when she goes to the bathroom, she leaves the gate open and she leaves the door open. Not huge deals. But the problem is then Eliza follows her because she follows her everywhere. Mm -hmm. Then she goes into the bathroom. Then we hear dad, Eliza's brushing your, to you know, using your toothbrush on the ground or Eliza's putting her <laughs> toothbrush in my mouth. And I'm like, Stella, did you close the gate? Oh, no, dad. Yes. Did you close the door? Oh, no, dad. Yeah. So I'm like, how much clearer can I make this? And so for that mod, so that it's not about how I'm telling her or what I'm telling her, but I probably don't close the gate because then when I'm in the bathroom, I just close the door or I just grab Eliza and move her out before. It's so modeling. I'm not modeling. Yeah. So so it's like more on the on the uh, before the problem arises, mm -hmm. you're doing a lot of that to communicate. Yes. The listening and the correcting because I think Correct. a lot of parents just change the way they say it. Or like point two, we're going to get into yeah. you, you scream or you yell yeah, correct. in a different model. but Yeah. So if we go back to that, so now you can add the think out loud as you're going to the yeah. bathroom. You're I'm like, man, I got to go potty. I better close the gate. I don't want Eliza to follow me. You just speak out loud. Yeah. She'll hear it even though you're not talking to anybody. So I do that speak out loud, but not for this. Um, I, I try to teach her how to, to watch. I want her to see me fail. Yeah. You know, so sometimes I'll, I'll do that. But like, oh, man, I didn't get this right. And then I wait for her to respond, and then she'll say something like, you know, but dad, remember, we don't quit or something yes, like that. Correct. You know, so I want her to do that, but I've never thought about doing it 100%, on that's... the listening aspect of it. So stop and think about, okay, if you wanted to teach, if you wanted to teach her how to do anything, like try a new pancake or, you know, do some trick, skip or jump off a step, we don't use negative language. We don't put our eyebrows like this. We don't have any harshness. It is super light and funny. We use the hey, hey, hey yep. music yep. to kind of keep a beat, to keep a rhythm so that we can push through fear. And so that's how we teach. So if you're trying to get her to unlearn something and you use all this stuff, she just going to walk away from it because she's like, I don't like being in trouble. But instead of using that stuff, we just go, OK, I don't want her to do that. Let me model this good behavior. Let me think out loud, pretty loud. Right. And now here's the cool part. The last piece is you can add YouTube. You've you've you just identified the number one way kids learn is through visual cortex. Okay. Their language isn't developed yet. That's that takes all the way up to about age 16. So what you're really using is you're using the visual cortex. So they learn through pictures and videos. And so think about how glued they are. You watch a YouTube video. They come out acting like them, talking like them. These little sassy girls with, with their slime and their nails that Valencia has. I know right away when I get home from work who she's, what channel she's on because she acts like those people. Yep. Like from the Bronx or from California, you know, or she's just a little sassy. And I'm like, how much time did you use? She's like, I got 45 minutes left on my screen, Dad. I'm like, oh, dang. I, hope, I was hoping she was done. <laughs> yep. So so you got the YouTube piece to model that, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, Stella watches. It's a weird, weird concept, but she watches. And I'm sure if you have kids, you know this. She watches other kids on YouTube play dolls and uh, Barbies and all that stuff. And the way she watches. It's kind of like play, you watching other kids play Twitch, Fortnite. Twitch. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, so what she does is she uh, watches that and it's changed the way she's played. It used to be yeah. like, blah, blah, blah. And we're going to jump and we're going to, and now it's like, I'm cooking a meal for dinner. And she's like, it's real focused and intentional yeah. because she's modeled and watched that. Correct. Sweet. Next one, how to get them to immediately respond. Yeah. So, so parents ask me that all the time. Like, how come, how come I can't get my kids to listen immediately? And then the second part is, or I have to yell to get them to jump or move, right? Yeah, let me explain. When I, yeah. This is kind of comes from a, my struggle. So 
back to YouTube, back to videos, um, or just any time. Stella's real imaginary. Yeah. She loves to, to get into that. She's that, a creative. Yeah, creative mindset. And it comes, and I like it, but she'll be on, she'll be watching a TV show, and she'll just be, we've all seen it before, you know, like this. Yeah. I'm like, Stella. <laughs> Stella. I get closer. Stella. So finally I'm like, Stella. Yeah, Dad. And I'm like, I know you heard me. Like, it was in, it's impossible for you to not have physically heard me yeah. say your name. Or the other day she was brushing her teeth, and uh, I sent her into the, to the bathroom. Hey, go brush your teeth, doing her nightly routine. I walk in maybe five minutes later, and she's holding this toothbrush, and she's just like, mm, like moving it around and <laughs> blah, blah. And I'm like, Stella. And she's like, mm, mm. I'm like, I'm like, Stella. I'm, I'm literally sending me to you. Stella. She's still just, just looking at this thing. And like, so finally I'm like, Stella. And she's like, I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, brushing my teeth. Toothbrush was dry. No water. No toothpaste. I'm like, no, you're not. She's like, yes, I am, Dad. I'm brushing my I'm like, you've been in here for five minutes, you know? Yes. So like, I think that is just a couple scenarios. I know parents watching have been that same way. You're like, I know you heard me. So, but how do we get them to immediately respond or snap out of that? Because I don't want to have to raise my voice every single time. Like it's not something that I would like yeah. to create a routine. I, I'm just going to say like with, with Stella, that might be genetic. Cause mom has snapped several photos of you <laughs> butt naked on the way to the bathtub because you couldn't go in the bathtub. You'd fall asleep on carpet. Just lay there. I mean, once again, I blame you <laughs> as my parent. <laughs> oh wait, my you, brain was, you formed that was by modeled. Me. Yes. Yes. Modeled. <laughs> yes. Uh, I plead the fifth. Okay. Let's so go how back. do we get them to respond immediately? Yeah. So, okay. So this is called coercive parenting interaction. So I'm going to coerce my kid to listen. So typically there's a, there's a disciplinary parent in the house and there's one who's a little more soft, right? So let's start with the soft person. So the soft parent, male or female, like good cop, bad cop, kind of correct. Yep. So the soft parent will give like, I'm counting to three, but then I actually count to seven. So that's, you know, they just, I'm counting they, to three, uh, three times. Correct. So I've already said three. I'm going to say three for the third time. Don't like, make me say three, two, yes. two and a half. Correct. You're right. 2.75. They count to 13, but they're still stuck on two. Okay? okay. So that's the soft parent. So the soft parent will do exactly what you say. So it's like the parent requests like, Hey, Stella, listen, nothing. Hey, Stella, I'm going to count to three. Nothing. Hey, Stella, nothing. Finally, the parent will escalate, and when they escalate, that's where it triggers the kid. So the first triggering of the kid is a delay. Like, their logic is this. If I'm quiet, quiet works all the time because when I'm quiet, my parents ignore me. Okay? Sure. So when you trigger a kid, they go to mute mode. I can get away with this one. I get away with a lot of stuff if I'm quiet. So that makes parents more mad because you see them and you see them now ignore you. Yep. So that triggers a second level of parenting where now that you yell. And when you trigger a yell, you trigger an immediate response in a kid that is always action oriented, which is I am. Yep. And, but you can see him sitting there and you're like, you're sitting on your butt. You're not. I am. Yeah. I'm putting my shoes on. And you're like, Literally your shoes brush. are at the door. Yeah. <laughs> your brush is not wet. There's no toothpaste and your mouth is dry. But I am. You're flying this toothbrush like it was a unicorn. You're not yes. brushing your teeth. But what you start crying. Yes, I am. And I'm like, Lisa. Yeah. Get in here. <laughs> That's when you tag team. Yes. Like, I'm out. I'm, like, I'm, I'm out. Done. I'm done. I'm going to hug her and kiss her. No. No. no I'm going to kick her into yeah, the I'm tree. I'm going to throw her into the <laughs> bathtub. <laughs> yeah. So this is the thing. So I am, from a kid's standpoint, is because they've made a decision now. Like, oh. Like, oh, I'm done. Like, okay, I am. I am. I am. Do you yep. see that? It's not I physically I'm brushing my teeth. I've made the commitment. I'm going. Yeah, because in that's, her mind, she was. She that's was what they're trying to do. On the stool. They're trying she to let was, you know, yeah. like, oh, I am. I am. I am. Yep. This, is, this is like adults when you're like, where are you? And they text back, I'm around the corner. Yeah. And they're not. <laughs> you, bro, you're 13 blocks yeah, away. You're I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's the same thing, right? But with a kid, we assume that their language is ours. We assume they're now absolutely positively aligned in our face. They're just trying to work, work through the language thing, okay? Now, let's flip that, and let's look at the disciplinary parent. Oh, by the way, okay, so now she, Stella's like, I am, I am, and she's yelling back at the mom, and she's like, you're going to get it, and then they, they just start to escalate. The, the passive mom or the passive dad in that soft mindset, they feel bad for triggering their kid. 
So then they're like, you're never going to ride your bike all day long. You're going to sit in your house. And then the kid starts bawling. You're such a mean mommy. You're such a mean daddy. And then the, that parent goes, I shouldn't have done this. You know what? Fine. Forget it. Don't brush your teeth. Just keep playing Barbies. And so they walk away. Now, heart wise, that's the right thing to do. Discipline wise, that's terrible. What happened to a kid is a kid realized I took, you know, I took daddy to round 10 and he caved. Bro, I can take dad in round 10. Let's go. Yep. So now you've just reinforced their disobedience. So yelling, uh, open ended disciplinary punishments that are not going to be seen through or Correct. walked through. Correct. And then now empty not only threats. not yeah, empty threats, not only now did I not get to brush my teeth, but now I get to go back to doing what I really Correct. wanted to do. To and with. they're crying. But then in the end of their crying, they're like, I just outlasted mom. I just took dad. Yep. You they might not ever say that, but that's no, what they're thinking. You can't, that's right. Brain just that, that's, that's, that's how, because they always ask, how did that just happen? Right? So like Stella always goes, what the? Right. <laughs> what the? Because yeah. like she's asking, how did that just happen? Yep. That's what they always do. And so they're going to look back at the very last thing. The last thing I said, I hate mommy or I hate daddy. And he walked away. Do you see? Yep. Okay. Now here's where the coercion comes. Now let's pick, pick the disciplinary parent. Sometimes it's a woman. Sometimes that's a man. Same system, right? Hey, I need you to do this. And nothing happens. So the parent gets up. Now they're upset. They go make contact. And now they ignite the kid. The first thing, the kid delays, right? Second thing, the kid gives the I am. Third thing, the parent says, that's it. You've lost your bike all day. You're grounded to your room. The kid freaks out and yells and says, I hate you. You're such a stupid bad daddy. And then the, the parent grabs a kid, whacks them or chokes them or grabs their shirt and, you know, pushes them around. Or then says stuff like, that's it. Now you're grounded for five days. And then the kid screams and hollers and it's a tantrum. And then she runs to mommy or daddy, who was the opposite. And then the soft parent says, what are you doing? Get away from her. You know, you're crushing her or whatever. And now the kid realizes I'm protected. Now the end result is I don't have to listen to daddy if I'm protected by my mommy. Or I don't have to listen to mommy if I'm protected by daddy. Yeah. Do you get okay. it? Yeah. So what happens is we're teaching a kid to go the full distance emotionally with us and then still not have a consequence. Do you make sense? So one is because you f the parent feels bad, or number two, the parent is protected, or the kid is protected by the parent that is the soft parent. Correct. So or or number three, if that soft parent's gone, that that aggressive disciplinary parent will hurt the kid, spank him, whack him, say mean say things, something. emotionally yeah. crush him, and then there's a guilt feeling. So then what happens is you just let the kid get away with some other things. Okay, that's a really bad system of parenting. But just so you know, we all do it. And to be just be 100% honest, that's how I parented you the first several years because it's called default mode parenting. That's how I was raised. It's like escalate and fight. And then like the strongest person wins. Um, so that's called like uh, power and control. He who can control the situation yep. actually carries the power, right? So, and that's how like, that's what we have in society today. So now if we come back down to what do we do? How do we model this? Okay. Yeah. Perfect the, scenario. Walk us through that. The number one situation is when then. Never forget this concept of when them. It's called the grandma's principle, which is when you finish your, you know, your meal, then you can have dessert. That's where it started. Okay. okay. So when then is super important because you have to show a kid what's happening. If a kid can predict consequences, they're 40% more likely to comply on the first time. Why? Because they can predict what's happening. It's easy for them. So what you would do is you can yell from the other room, but it doesn't usually work. Like, Stella, I need you to brush your teeth. You know she ain't going to listen because she's zoned out. So that doesn't work. So that, I don't count that as number one. Number one is you walk all the way to her and you touch her. You just tap her. She can still be watching her movie. She's still zoned out. But you're tapping her. Stella, Stella. Huh. And then you say, I need you to brush your teeth. When you brush your teeth, then we can go. Or whatever that is. The when yep. then thing, okay? When you brush your teeth, then we'll get snacks. Or when you brush your teeth, then we'll go see Pappy whatever that looks like, a when then. And then you can walk away and then you come back in the second time. If she still hasn't moved the second time, now you have to interrupt her. So you push pause on the remote, stand in between her and the TV. So now instead she's not looking like this, she's looking right at you. And now you give her the when then. Hey, I've already warned you once. This is your second warning. When you brush your teeth, then we can go get Pappy. When you don't brush your teeth, then I'm going to take away TV for all today. And then she'll be like, no. And then you walk away. Okay, if you come back in that third time and she hasn't brushed her teeth, now you have to take something away. Stella, I've warned you once. I've warned you twice. This is your third warning. Yep. When you don't brush your teeth, 
then we can't go to Pappy's. And I've already told you three times. So now you've lost your spirit for the rest of the day. No more YouTube today. Yep. And she'll probably cry. And then it's like, now okay, you go brush your teeth. And then you walk away, disengage. And then normally she'll go brush her teeth and she's pouty. But you haven't wounded her. You haven't hurt her. You haven't right. crushed her. You've just calmly disciplined her. And what she's playing in her head is like, how did I get here? Like, what the? Oh, daddy told me three times. And now she'll see that all I have to do is listen and I can keep spirit. Now, once a kid drops that plan, when you come in the first time or the second time, they usually jump and they'll go do it. And they'll come happy to you and be like, daddy, I brushed my teeth. I, I brushed my teeth. And you'll say, great. And now you play back the tape. When you brush your teeth, then we can go see Pappy. And guess what? You get to keep YouTube in spirit because you did great. And then you high five and dance and they're pretty excited. And what you're teaching them is autonomy because that's what they're trying to do. Like, I'm a big kid. I'm four. I can like run the world. I don't need a dad. Yep. So you're, you're tapping into their autonomy of like, I got this. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So that's the when then model. I like it. Yeah, I think I think there's a one one of my biggest takeaways through this whole thing is is my the way I question or or I, I should say command her or ask her to do things mm -hmm. is not even being received. But in my Correct. mind, I'm on step five because I yelled in the other room. Correct. I at the door frame told her. Then I came, but all those are kind of probably like you said, still starting at zero because she's not even hearing them or getting Correct. them. So if I can grab her you know, touch her, get her to break that. And then that's the first request. Cause by the time I came in there, the I, I was on like request seven. Yeah. Cause I yelled from the other room. I yelled right. while I was getting Eliza's diaper changed. I walked by the bathroom. You better be brushing your teeth. You know? So in my mind, I've told her seven times, but in her mind, that was probably the first time is when I said, Stella. Yes, you know, correct. And, and if we're being honest, a person's watching a program or is on the phone call or is, you know, reading or typing or working, cooking, and you're yelling while you're doing. So now you're frustrated because like you got two things open yeah. and when you come in, you're heated. Right. So yeah. the step one is you have to make physical contact. Make sure she comprehends the request that you're asking. Yes. So it's I contact like it. the when then yep. and then it's the contact with the warning and then it's the contact with the discipline. Because if we're being honest, you know, what I'm saying like that's probably what I do with Alicia from time to time. You know, like Tyler, Tyler, <laughs> Tyler, Tyler, I'm talking to you. Like, okay. I yeah, wasn't going to say anything, <laughs> but I was thinking, dude, if you got your headsets on and you're playing like Fortnite or something, oh, you ain't going to be there's listening. There's literally nothing more scary than when I'm playing video games and I'm locked into my headset and playing and she comes down to the basement with the lights off and grabs my shoulder. It like it just. Yeah, because she's probably yeah, yelling at I'm you. I'm just zoned and then she, I'm, <laughs> ah, yeah. Like, why would you do that? Yeah. But, yeah. That's so the modeling. Again, probably, that's the modeling. She's correct. So I got to change me. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to wrap up with that? No, that's Did all. We hit them all. Sweet. Um, mm -hmm. Well, give us, uh, as Marshawn Lynch said, go take care of your mantles. Go take care of your mantles. Give us that action step, that one thing we can do okay. to become uh, a resilient parent through teaching our kids how to listen better. Yeah, your number one action step is self awareness. Be aware of your default mode parenting. My default mode parenting with you was I yelled first, just automatically yelled because if I just, I don't know, impatient. So I would just yell right away because that was modeled to me. And I didn't even know it was in me until Stacy started saying, he didn't even do anything. Why are you yelling? And my, my answer was, was because when I yell, I get his attention. And she's like, but you yell and make him cry. Okay, so I'm the disciplinary one. Stacy's the soft one. She counts to 17, right? Twice. I count to two. I'm right. like, I'm going to count to three. And then on two, I'm grabbing you. Yep. And Stacy's like, that's not even fair. So, that, so you have to be aware of that default mode parenting. While I was in athletic training, I was so hurt, like, I don't know what I'm doing, and I wanted to do it right. I literally dropped a class, and I took, it's called uh, behavior modification. Like, how do you change behavior? I literally looked, I looked in the manual, because we didn't have internet. I looked in the manual of courses, and I was trying to find out how do you change behavior. And so I found a class called behavior modification. So I took it. I was already, like, two weeks late, but they let me drop it. And I took that class spring semester. And I started coming home, literally reading the book, reading the article, and trying to do exactly what it's telling me to do. And this is what you people heard don't. here. I'm a test child. Yeah. I, I was a lab rat. <laughs> if you ever see Tyler and he's got a twitch, I'm sorry. Uh, I was a lab rat. I was default. I was default parenting. On record. I'm trying. No, go ahead. Yeah, no, but that that's a true story. In fact, I mean, uh, what what made what made us change is one day I came home, and Stacy gave me a note that said, "Hey, Tyler did this and this and this." So he needs four spankings and I couldn't find you. You hid because you were afraid of me. That's when I was like, I'm not doing this program no more. 
I'm just, something's got to change. That's when I, I literally looked up a class. And people don't understand this. They see us now or see this like, yeah, but it's easy for you. You got it all together or whatever they, see, whatever they think. They don't understand those climbs. Every situation where you see success, you've seen a climb. But if you didn't see the climb, you just see us standing up here. Yep. You know what I mean? And, and you have to look back and be like, bro, how'd you get here? Like well, Stella, even, like what the, and even in how'd that, you get here? We're, we're talking about the best case scenarios. We're not like you still discipline Valencia and there's still is mess ups that you make as a parent now Correct. with you knowing all of this knowledge anyway. Yes. I mean, it's not like we're perfect. We're just talking yeah. about some situations and the ideal models. Yeah. And, and this is the thing. Be self-aware of your default mode because my default mode sometimes is just like, go for it. So like anytime the kids, I, I remember for, for, for sure, Valencia has already done it and Tavian did it, which is like, I'm going to pack a suitcase. I'm going to go to so-and-so's. I'll just say, you know, Tyler, I'm going to go to Tyler's house because he's a great dad. And I'd be like, you know where the suitcase is? And then I walk away and Stacy's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, did I just say that? <laughs> Dang it. You know, so there's, yeah. I got to come back too. So Mar like Marshawn Lynch says, manage your mental moments, be aware of yourself be self-aware of your default mode because your default mode is where you're currently at. Yep. Right. And you got to, once you know, then you can't unknow. Correct. Begin to climb. Sweet. hundred percent. Before we leave you, as you continue with your morning, afternoon, or evening, we just want to remind you there are two times to be great when you feel like it. And when you don't next Amen. week, we're going to talk about resilient parenting part two. We're going to answer another question. That's one of the questions parents ask. One of the biggest struggles we go through. So make sure you tune in next week. And then also just an announcement. We uh, started a Facebook page, Renewing the Mind podcast. So check us the Facebook page. That's yes. where we're going to push all of our content. Hopefully be uh, continuing to grow the content on that page. And then also our Instagram, Renewing the Mind podcast. That's where we're going to try to communicate. Share some what moments, yep. ask some questions. Yep. Message us through that. That's going to be kind of the podcast. Order social some mugs. Media. Yep, uh, we'll post in a video about that and and uh, hopefully the week coming. But so if we talked to you on any level, anything we spoke on uh, uh, impacted you, please leave us a review wherever you consume this podcast. And if you're watching on YouTube, give us that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. And then like dad just said, leave us a comment on today. If you got any further questions on parenting, Correct. how to get them to listen, maybe specific situations, we'd love to hop on and kind of talk to you about that. And uh, as always, renew your perspective, move towards uncertainty, and find what's awesome about that. In what, every situation, what, what? We love you. Peace. I had to realize what's inside of me. For all of the people that lied to me. For all of the people that said I would fall off. Oh, but what a time to be alive. I wrote this for everyone, feel like they counted out. You need to look in the mirror and tell yourself it's time to be who I am now. Greatness. <laughs>